Right here. Should be working like this. Being live streamed. Okay, great. Hello, Fantastic. everyone. It's us. <laughs> it's yes, us. it is us again. Da, 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 da. All right, uh, and I'm going to shut down all the other tabs. Here we go. It works. Oh my God. This was so smooth compared to the last times. <laughs> yeah, absolutely okay. amazing, isn't it? Oh, fantastic. Perfect. Welcome, everyone. I took you to my bedroom today because I didn't want to get up. <laughs> because it's dark outside. So, why would I get up? So, um, it's 8 30 in Germany or 8 40 by now. I hope you can hear me fine. This is Russ. You know, Russ, I don't have to introduce him. Oh, we wanted to talk. Here we are again. Yes, here we are again. One last time before yeah. Christmas. Slip it in. Uh, last time I said, oh, yeah, we don't have to wish you like a nice Christmas days because we're going to meet up before Christmas. And then last week I was like, Oh God, <laughs> we need to, we need to, I need to schedule a date and here we are. So, yeah, so welcome. We are going to talk what are we about, talking about today, Senya? Sorry. What are we talking about today? We have a very interesting topic. What are we talking? I feel like I'm Rosie. I feel like I'm Rosie and you're, and you're like, what are we talking about today? I'm like, just being oh, cute look, and look, and you're going to say what we're going to talk about. And that's <laughs> What are we going to talk about? Because I know you prepared some very nice information and a lot of things that have been on your mind the last days. So let's start. What are we talking about? We're going to, we're going to talk about the N-word, um, which is narcissism and narcissists. Oh, God, they're everywhere. That, that classic <laughs> meme, you know, that meme where... Um, what do you see? What do you look? What do you see in the world when you're an empath? And this little girl going narcissists everywhere. They are everywhere. And and they're going to destroy you. Yes, we're going to we're going to clarify a few things. I think um, around narcissism, what it is, what it isn't, um, and and then talk about the perils of on, of online dating or dating in general. Okay. Okay. Let's let's approach this in a way of. Um, I'm a girl, like I'm 20 years old because I'm 20 years old, you know, <laughs> and I'm a girl <laughs> and I'm scrolling through my feet and I'm right. seeing some people posting stuff about the 10 signs that you're dating a narcissist. <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I'm like, wow, this is me. Like you, like you scroll through feeds and you read stuff and you're like, wow, this is me. She's talking about me. What am I reading? Oh, if you're, yeah, if it says you're a narcissist. Well, first of all, I think I need to add the disclaimer uh, and then, then I'll tell you a few stories about my encounters with narcissists and, and the inquiry into narcissism in general. But first of all, let's clarify. It's a term which, in, which, strictly speaking needs to be diagnosed by a professional psychiatrist or psychotherapist of which let's be very clear i am not i'm qualified in many things but psychiatry and psychotherapy i am not so uh and most people are not either and so generally speaking if someone is labeling someone else a narcissist unless they are um unless they are essentially breaching confidentiality about their clinical patient, it's technically unlikely that they're talking about an actual narcissist. Narcissistic traits is a different story, okay? And then I'm going to offer to some degree, we all have narcissistic traits and it's actually a stage of development when you're very, very young, uh, which kind of looks like, the world revolves around me, I am right, and there is no other valid viewpoint of the world other than my own, okay? Mm. What this looks like in practice is you're going through life and you meet somebody with, a, with, with narcissistic traits uh, and you want to convince them to do something or to be a certain way or to consider your point of view and they just flatly refuse either because they don't want to or because they can't. 
And then what happens is if you're disgruntled with that person, you call them a narcissist. Yeah. That tends to be what happens in the general world of the internet and, and dating in general. Okay. Yeah. So, but some of the signs of narcissism, as I said, are uh, an over-focus on your worldview, um, an excessive self, a sense of self-importance, uh, and uh, yeah, basically an obsession with oneself and one's worldview with limited ability or no ability to take on board another person's point of view, mm. you know, kind of empathy, basically. So, um, yeah. And I'm not saying this is good or bad either. I'm just saying this is this is kind of the observation. Yeah, we can get into the good and bad aspects uh, a little further down the track. Yeah, ah, good and bad aspects of of NASA. Uh, something that you know is a title that I would have never thought <laughs> I, I would be speaking about, like good aspects of narcissists. I don't know about you, right. but um, I wondered whether I was one at some point because um, <laughs> because oh, I, I have know. something to say. About that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's a very, very uh, intelligent, extremely intelligent man called Ken Wilber, and he's a modern day philosopher. You can look him up, Ken Wilber, W-A-L-B-E-R. He basically put together a theory of everything, and it's, he's quite an amazing dude. And one of the things I love about him, apart, of his, apart from his incredible intelligence, is his ability to both laugh at himself and to also say, all of my theories will probably be superseded at some point. And I just, mm -hmm. just love his humility. Mm -hmm. He says that narcissism is one of the psychological diseases which is preventing us from moving up to another level of consciousness as a group of people. So I was, I was learning about this and going, oh, am I a narcissist? You know, I do have a, a healthy, you know, I do have a focus on myself. I'm always doing personal development. Is that a sign of narcissism? Should I be more focused on other people? Yeah. Um, very, con you know, to a degree, I'm concerned about how I look and how other people perceive me. And there are things about my worldview, which I won't, I won't budge on. Does this make me a narcissist? Yeah. And I asked a very, very smart friend of mine who is, has spent a lot of time with Ken Wilber, you know, I'm wondering, am I a narcissist? And his response was beautiful. He basically said, look, Russ, if you're concerned and wondering whether you're a narcissist or not, you're, not. you're probably not a narcissist, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying to my clients too. Uh, when people say, I think I've got these traits because it's omnipresent, right? It's everywhere. And you read it and you identify it because those people who are writing those posts out of marketing reasons, please be yeah. clear that they are trying to address you. They are thinking about what could people think is probably wrong with me and they're taking it and they're putting it in a post so you feel touched. So, so you will feel this is about you. So naturally... Yeah you're going to think this is this is me and uh it's it's a disorder right it's a it, it's not something that just appears out of um some some wounding from a relationship you don't come out of a relationship and suddenly you are a narcissist nobody can <laughs> immediately make you i've heard all those things all those worries people are people are um yeah they don't know how to how to use this term and um I think most important is to, to realize um, that, you know, that women love to put themselves into the victim role. And I love women. I am a woman. And I'm so sick of reading all the blaming, shaming of other people, men, in this case, mostly men, um, who do have emotional baggage. Who doesn't? We all have. Mm. And please just please just be aware that you can't just go around and label people. That's not mm. okay. I mean, your anger is absolutely cool. You, 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 mm -hmm. it, it has space. You can let it roll everywhere around you where you think it's healthy to do so, but not by 
taking terms and just to feel better that mm. hurt you narcissistic people because there's always two sides of the story we all have trauma right so there's mm -hmm. i mean it's a natural thing if you're hurt you're yes. gonna shut down it's a natural thing to want to be right right because that's that's feeling self-secure if you know that the the way you you approach the world and you perceive the world is uh, is right that makes you feel secure right so everybody wants to yes. be right yes yes if, that's that mm -hmm. it's it all comes from from elements that are natural and healthy and then mm. it starts to go somewhere mm -hmm. where we don't want to have it and where um maybe we can talk about treatment if you want but i'm i'm just going i'm just putting up my flag for uh we all have problems we all have relationship issues um least least people in the world are born raised and go into healthy relationships go into healthy communication um, because we don't learn it and we get hurt way before we have a chance of learning it if we don't have role models um such as parents yes, yes. who can have problems but who who in the core love each other if you don't have that you're probably not gonna have a first healthy relationship and if you don't have one you're gonna get hurt everybody's it's gonna get dramatic tragic whatever and mm. you're gonna you're gonna mm. i don't know make consequences I, and yeah yeah I, I love i love all the things you're saying when you're <laughs> first of all i'm i'm really glad you kind of said I, I can't remember it exactly now but this thing around women being a victim because uh, if I say that kind of stuff, then I get in trouble. And but it's it's kind of from my observation, it is mainly whenever I hear the word narcissist, it's generally in the context of a woman blaming a man that she's been in a relationship with. Other times a parent, um, but very often a uh, a man. And it is true that men tend to display more narcissistic traits probably comes hand in hand with men being more avoidant, having more avoidant attachment wounds. Mm -hmm. um, and then all of the things that you're speaking about, about basically having compassion for what creates narcissism, that compassion and understanding of the other allows you to find a way to forgive that person and also to ultimately forgive yourself. Yeah for being and staying within a relationship which was you know in you know in this aspect wound based as well because if you're with a narcissist then part of the healing uh, comes with owning the fact that you stayed in that relationship yeah. and there is a part there is you bear part of that responsibility and when you can be able to forgive the nurse the narcissist in inverted mm -hmm. commas uh, that's very empowering for you to begin your healing journey to basically ensuring that you don't repeat that again mm -hmm. and that you repair whatever it was in you that created or was attracted to that dynamic and that's that's very that's crucial that's very important yeah and please be aware that if this right now makes you angry then you're probably one of those people who has those information in their energy system in their field where those emotionally unavailable people are attracted by are drawn to so if you're getting angry what i'm saying at, at what we're saying then you're probably exactly that person that just repeatedly makes this experience of i'm not being seen in relationships i'm not important i'm being uh, kept down i'm being made wrong what whatever 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 and if you tend to go into relationships with these people because there are these red flags and mm -hmm. you must have ignored them a few times so apparently this is your thing so it answers to a program in you it answers to a wound to a trauma in you and of course you're going to experience it again that doesn't mean i mean what we're saying doesn't mean that you're wrong or that it's your yes, own fault exactly. or we're not blaming yes. you we're just saying if if you're being touched by this if this is triggering you moving you making you angry making you sad there's something there's some information that's being hooked by what we're saying 
And that's what needs to heal. You don't have any chance of having a new uh, reality in your relation um, to other people if you're not looking at those tiny parts. So in women, um, what trauma can be there that we get attached to those people that they call narcissists? So what, what, what has to be broken in us in order to try to heal through attaching to them? Mm, it's a really good question. And first of all, I'm going to say, yeah, these, if you are getting, if you're noticing some sensations in your body or some feelings coming up, um, that, yeah, to really welcome in these sensations with a lot of care mm -hmm. and compassion and, and kindness. It's like, this is your, this is your body's, your soul's invitation to become curious about, oh, what's coming up as I'm hearing Svenja and Russ talk and to, to really welcome it in with, with a lot of love um, as, as is my practice and as is kind of, this is what I do in my clinical practice. Mm -hmm. And this heals these things is welcoming in these, these experiences, these feelings with a lot of love and spaciousness and compassion, yeah. because if you shut it down or go, this is, this is, um, or you identify with that anger or that sadness, you will become enmeshed with the feeling and you won't be able to transcend it. So it's a beautiful, any triggers in this conversation, I'm going to say a, 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 just a very sweet invitation to, to continue doing the work um and then what you know how does this arise how is it that some people attract narcissists or narcissistic traits into their relationships um in a way which is detrimental and so one of the things that springs to mind is that if you've had parents who were themselves uh and i'm going to keep phrasing this very carefully if you had parents who displayed narcissistic traits, uh, which might look like they couldn't connect with your emotional needs or they were more obsessed with themselves mm -hmm. uh, than your needs or they just weren't available, that's how you as a little baby coded love. So that when you meet somebody in the real world who also displays these uh, uh these traits of perhaps ignoring your needs or putting their needs first um part of your part of your attachment system is going to go oh this is what love is this is what i remember from my primary caregivers therefore this person uh is loving me okay yeah. and it's it's a it's a very powerful force it, you know logically of course we all know that's a dreadful idea to be with somebody who ignores you or doesn't meet your needs and that's but what your dealing... girlfriends are going to say like why do you why do you keep repeating it you know it's bad and you're just like i don't know that's that that's right we, it, there's a very deep I've learned a very deep humility and respect for these parts of myself which mm. are unconscious but have such a deep influence on my life these you know and this is the path that we're all trying to do which is awaken which is to bring these patterns to conscious awareness and unfortunately pain is one of the biggest ways that we wake up you know and I'm, I'm talking with a friend now who's you know who was married to a narcissist for for 20 something years and is now coming out and going oh okay uh, there's a lot of things that I need to to recognize and and to address now and um you know if she'd been in a happy marriage for 20 years she wouldn't be as as fired up just to kind of start opening herself and and shifting some of these things pain unfortunately is one of the ways that we wake up and it's also one of the ways that we can develop a lot of compassion for ourselves and others so I also want to say that if you've been in a relationship where you've realized, oh, I've attracted someone with narcissistic traits and that was unpleasant, this is an opportunity now. Instead of going around trying to paint every man with red flags to repair the things in you that were not met during childhood. Yeah. And when you do that, your whole world will change in incredible ways. And in incredible speed, oh my God, 
um, I can I can uh, pin down the the different level of of men I'm meeting since I've been doing the work uh, and I don't mm. mean Byron Katie's the work. I, also that but like the, I'm always calling it the shit work because it's not pleasant <laughs> it never feels good while doing it and but not doing it the price is higher so I've been in different coaching mm -hmm. containers I've been diving into polarity a lot I've been working with you I've been working with um, another therapist um, to because I felt like I'm stuck right love apparently isn't enough like it's not enough for me to have an open heart and to to love it's mm -hmm. because it's, it keeps on happening so the programs in me that still attract those guys like for, for me that's always weak people that need my support <laughs> because wow. I'm I I'm I naturally have a very like I'm a manifest in human design and that's a very masculine type so we have two masculine types and two feminine types so this is always my um my default mode right i'm gonna go into the masculine i'm gonna come ju just get out of my way <laughs> i'm gonna do it i don't need your help the strong independent woman blah so i would keep attracting weak guys right because that's if we look on an energetic level that's the only space that's free the weakness <laughs> because i'm not living it <laughs> so i would attract uh -huh. that and i was like i don't see a solution in this like love is not enough okay so what do i mm. what do i do And then I like I, I, I stepped into this world and there were solutions everywhere. And I was like, oh, oh God, okay, I can basically fix that because, you know, something's really wrong with me. Everybody thinks something's really wrong with me and um, nobody can fix me. And I'm, I can never, you know, all those people getting married, having kids. And I'm like, I love dogs. Yeah, so <laughs> nobody who can fix me. Like, and, and shout out yeah. to everyone who loves dogs, by the way. Sorry, I said shout out to everyone who loves dogs, by the way. Yeah, they're the better people. Ooh. Still saying that. Maybe there will be a time where I'm not stating that anymore. But yeah, so what what I'm saying is we need to change the 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 wounding, the pain in us. We need to embrace it. We need to shower it with love and that's where i think people like you come into the game because you know there's only so far that my personal work can go i can reflect upon things i can be clear upon things and they will still keep on happening and that's yeah. frustrating and that's where we think i shouldn't have started this shit with the personal yeah. development and realizing what i am and who i am and what i'm doing Because there's no solution, <laughs> right? I'm, I'm trapped in my life. Like, who's gonna? And I'm, I'm, yeah, that's a problem. And then I think, um, yeah. I think there's a parable somewhere about you know a, a, a pilgrim going to start on the path. You know, the path being a metaphor for personal development, mm -hmm. and a wise man saying, "You, you sure you don't want to step on it? Once you step on this path, there's no going back. It's like literally taking like at the red pill." And going, okay, I'm going to peer what's behind the matrix. And it's not necessarily pretty. Sometimes you just want to go back to your old ignorance is bliss. Exactly. And just But, go numbing yourself and watch Netflix all the time and keep on doing sports until you, I don't know, uh, or eat and never stop. So, and, and, and that's where, like, that's what I can do for myself. Like the, the personal development, realizing, reflecting and stuff like that, getting inspired. Okay. But then there's this moment when somebody else comes into your field and starts seeing you and showering you with love, seeing those programs and not answering them with, you know, hesitation and pulling back and, and judgment, but just opening their hearts. Oh my God, my body goes like, oh yeah. And that's, that's what I mean by, Why don't you let somebody else heal you in a safe surrounding? Because there <laughs> is this, this is like the, the maximum of healing I can receive when somebody else sees me in those very vulnerable places that I hate and they <laughs> stay and they stay. <laughs> and in that moment, I'm going to do everything to push them away, to kick them away, to blame them, to, you know, because I can't stand 
the pain that this has never happened before. So, ah, uh, yeah, being here through somebody yeah. else's it's loving that, eyes. That, hmm? Yeah, it's that staying in the place that you feel the most uncomfortable that allows your nervous system to shift and the shame to dissolve and your whole energy to to repair itself so i'm just going to comment on two two big factors that are here at work with the healing of this wound which has people attract narcissists let's call them narcissists yeah. for a brevity or, or people with narcissistic traits so how do we heal that wound and why does it come up so there's some great work by harvel hendrix uh, around something called imago theory, which basically says that as adults, we recreate the relationship we had in childhood so that we can give ourselves what we didn't get. So essentially what I spelled out before, if you had parents who, who had narcissistic traits or couldn't attend to your needs, yeah. it's like your body mind goes, this is an open thread I am going to literally manifest this in the world. You will be attracted to people who do those same things back to you yeah. because your body, your adult self is trying to repair and give itself what it missed in childhood. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, the partners that we choose are the ones that are the least equipped to do this <laughs> healing for us. They just bring the stuff to the surface. So, you kind of have two choices here either either you find a partner who to some degree is equipped um who has some skills to hold you but then you run the risk of turning your partner into your therapist which will which is you know it's an option but it tends to yeah. decrease the polarity and the sexual fun or you can take the things that are coming up and then bring them to a therapeutic container, you know, in the middle of therapy where you can work through them. And then with the therapist, you co-regulate, which means basically is a, a fancy way for saying you don't freak out when these uncomfortable uh, feelings come up. You can meet them. And as they're met, they dissolve, they metabolize. And then you can go, oh, I'm more integrated. I can go back to my relationship and assess it and go, do I want to stay in here? Is this healthy? Which it may be. Or do I want to go somewhere else? Which may also be a better option. But you're coming from a more integrated place. Yeah. And ideally that work is done with a therapist. Yeah. And look, I'm going to be honest here. It took me years to work that out because I was so deep in up my own, up my own asshole in terms of self development and thinking I can do all this myself and I have all these tools and blah blah blah. And then I got obliterated by a relationship and just went, "Oh, I need help. Like I'm, I need help." And I had, you know, I went out and when I went and saw my therapist for the first time. She I started, she was giving me stuff and I started doing it all myself in my head. And she's like, uh, 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 stay with me and stay with this process that I'm leading you through. And I'm like, <laughs> but it was so necessary and yeah. very humbling and beautiful as well. So mm. yeah, I can empathize with anyone who says I can do this all myself. And when you're ready or when life serves you up something that that you realize I need to do it with someone else, yeah, then then I support that as well. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> it's a fun thing. Yeah. Oh, having your partner being your coach is. Uh, I I I love to stick with something that Sophie said one day. Um, what was it? Uh, your partner can never be the first line of defense when shit hits the fan can never oh, be the that's... first line of defense it needs to be somebody else because this is too much pressure this is too much to it's you're falling down to it, it's it's um it's a too big thing it's too important for you to be caught and the mm. wounding that happens if if he or she can't hold you is too big that it's gonna yes. create a big trust issue and it's going to be such a strain on your relationship so it can never be mm -hmm. first line of defense and i love that yeah so do i i'm just feeling into that more like 
like with secure, I was thinking, oh, that, but that does sound like secure attachment. But in another way, it's like you want to know that your partner is there yeah. and they are not the first line of defense. Yeah. And just think at myself, I'm like, I love supporting my partners. Like when they're, when they're going through something um, and they are, but they're getting help from somewhere else. I'm like their biggest cheerleader and I just get yeah. right behind them. When they come to me, I have to switch into a different mode. You know, sometimes I switch into therapist mode or, or, or holding space mode, which is fine by me. I can hold boundaries as well if I'm being the therapist too much. Mm. Um, <laughs> a very different energy to me, just like cheering them on with everything I have as they're getting support from somewhere else. Um, yeah, that's the best role, knowing, right? It's it's great. And knowing, of course, that I'm there if they need it, you know, I'm there second, third line of defense, 100%, I'm right here. But I love, it's a, it turns me on, I think, when I see that they're getting support for something outside. Yeah, uh, it's outside. not on you. It's not your responsibility. It's not on you. It's not going to trigger you to death. Uh, you you won't be put in a position where you are triggered and you have to hold her and then if mm. you can't do it she's gonna serve it to you she's gonna blame you for it if not over it then she's gonna do it cold it's gonna happen and uh why you can just have your perfect best friend or coach or therapist first line of defense they are made for this they are always going to hold you they're not going to be triggered most probably not going to be triggered so mm -hmm. choose the people around you wisely, which is something that you should do anyways. <laughs> and yeah, 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 yeah. It's so it, it's such a yeah, it was a beautiful idea. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really like that. I really like that. And as yeah. I said, it I can feel that part of me like turning on, like my masculine, my masculinity gets turned on by that. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, this is, I like I this. I can be I can be nothing but the hero here. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, that's right. We, we men love that. Exactly. So and, exactly. Yeah. And there's a beautiful bridge here, um, which I just realized because when you said uh, you don't want to, you don't want to analyze, you don't want to uh, uh, be the therapist for uh, in dating in partnership. Um, it's so fucking hard to stop. Oh my god! It's even even when you're. I had this moment. A few days ago um with someone whom i hope i hope he's not watching but i've had this moment uh, <laughs> because we're friends on Actually, facebook he's not watching <laughs> yeah, shit, i should have thought about, about that before anyways i'm gonna tell the story now um we Either were at, talking through the phone and yeah. i really did my best i didn't say anything like about I told him I'm a coach but I didn't say anything about like I'm coaching this or that and you know this is where where my this is where I'm very good at and he was he was speaking like for for two minutes straight and mm -hmm. I was not saying anything <laughs> and then he stopped and said you're analyzing me aren't you and I was like oh god yes I am <laughs> it's so bad it's so bad i put you into 12 categories by now i sorted out the red flags i have it all wrapped <laughs> i fucking can't stop because we get all these we get all these um these categories and these labels and we love them right because they give us security they kind of that's why about polarity right finally somebody gives us back the control so we can we can go into relationship in a new energetic way and 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 what are we doing we're labeling again so yes. yeah what yes. we're doing. and this is why people love my containers because i label a lot and they feel like okay everything that's been blurry so far i can put into little pieces i'm understanding what's happening you know I can start mm. micromanaging again. I can start all those toxic, masculine <laughs> ways. I can control him. I exactly know how to manipulate him now by just dropping it to my feminine and just being radiant. What else is this than manipulation in some way? So, oh, yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah, yeah. it's like I, I, I can't, there's no off switch for that. And I would love this off switch, but then at the same time, my head goes like, okay we need mm. we need to hear the red flags we need to 
see where we're going to waste time. I mean, I'm making posts about how you find out what he really wants. And I'm going to find out what he really wants. <laughs> so <that's laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's so a couple of thoughts on that is, yeah, I love the 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 perspective. Well, the, the observation that labeling things gives us the illusion of control yeah. and the illusion of control gives us safety. And I think we all, let's have it, I took for myself. I've definitely gone through a phase where I've learned lots of different systems, you know, a little bit of, a little bit of human design, a lot of Chinese medicine, a lot of uh, different typing systems. And <clears throat> they're great mental, they're great mentally uh, for you to kind of do this kind of things you're talking about figure out where people are coming from, understand their motives, put them into a, a box where you can manipulate or, or whatever to them. And then I'd like to think that after that, and certainly this is what I noticed in myself, there's a point where you can let go of the labels and let go of the watching or the, or the, or the, or the putting of people into boxes and just engage with them and let things unfold in the moment okay when is that point going to come like after how many days after how many exactly. hours of spoken words how that's a good question it's i think it's different for everyone i was going to say it's after my after my uh, three months program svenja that's that's the answer i should give um but it <laughs> It's a, it's a, it's another stage. It's a stage of development, which Ken Wilber also talks about where you, after, I don't know, I think it's different for everybody, but I popped out of it quite a few years. I think I popped out of it when I was spending time with my therapist, actually. And she literally said, Russell, you have now graduated from the church of personal development. Okay. Oh. When I had done the work with her to the extent that I was like, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. And from that place, it naturally extended to other people. I think this is why I write, you know, I think this is why I've written in my recent posts, four posts on things like the superpowers of avoidance, the superpowers of anxious yeah. attachment, superpowers of narcissists, because I'm, I'm seeing a little more behind the veil of like where the creative intelligence is that rests within people and sometimes it comes out in these traits which we shame, but it, when you shame narcissists, you miss the deep intelligence of what's behind that. You know, I'm not saying it's still a good idea to date them, but when you can, when you can connect and understand the deep intelligence behind that, which resides in every human being, mm. your compassion for other people and an extension to yourself magnifies mm. and that is ultimately what we're we're wanting to connect more with this this deep self-love and while we're talking about narcissists i think the depth of your trigger around narcissists is probably a reflection of the very things that you need to cultivate more of like what do narcissists have self-absorption and this rock this rock solid belief in their own convictions to the exclusion of other people right mm -hmm. So you're, if you're a very empathic, highly sensitive person, right, it's probably a good idea for you to lean more towards the narcissist, some narcissistic traits of like, how about you have a point of view which you don't care if other people dislike, okay, mm -hmm. which is unshakable. Because if you want to start a business or offer something into the world, you better be prepared for people to not like you. Mm -hmm. And so you need that sense of unshakable self-conviction, mm -hmm. which doesn't care what other people think about because mm -hmm. you are wanting to create or bring or express something into the world. Can okay? I give a very practical advice for that? Because mm -hmm. I'm working with business starters all the time. Uh, and this mm -hmm. will, having this, will keep you from starting, will make you drag, you know, the whole visibility thing, showing what yep. you have to offer to people, making your first offer. You won't do that if you stick to this program. It's not going to happen because you know that we judge all the time. We're basically mm -hmm. judging, right? It's happening all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and people are going to yep. judge you. And if that's something that feels very scary for you, if you don't want that to happen, you're going to keep yourself from starting. 
it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So um, why don't you just download another energetic system for that? Why don't you just go through the world and repeat new questions instead of always asking yourself, okay, how can I do this perfectly? How, how, does, how do, do my pictures need to look? Uh, how does my dream client look? Start asking new questions. How would I feel? Or I love to say, buddy, show me. Mm. How would it feel to be this person that has brought out an offer that people loved? How does that feel? download the energy by asking questions how does it feel show me how does it feel when people book my offers how does it feel to be so self-secure how does it feel to be to know that what I have to give is so valuable to people how does that feel being convinced by that because you know it's not an affirmation you're not telling yourself something that isn't true because that's going to last for five minutes right Mm -hmm. but just Mm -hmm. ask for something that's not yet a part of you and then you're going to feel exactly that how does it feel to be so self-secure and how does it feel ah, to be convinced that what i have to give is important to the world and then it's going to shift something's going to shift yeah and that's all the magic you need to do. It's basically spell casting by asking good questions because you're including your brain. That's included mm-hmm. all the time anyways. So you're giving it an exercise to repeat and yeah. you're changing your frequency constantly. It's so good and it works. It's kind of like healthy narcissism. That's what it sounds like. You know, how would it feel to know that my offering was the best thing ever in the world and it was going to change people's lives hands down you know that it, is a and if you can have that sense of self-belief and conviction in your in what's in what you're offering that's kind of a real aspect yeah it works for everything when i'm going to have a new tattoo i'm going to download my friend lena because she never had, she's never in pain when she's getting tattooed so i'm sitting there saying okay if i were lena right now How would this feel? And my body is, you know, going to the field, like on an energetic level, going to her field, downloading the information, taking it over. And I can stand it for two hours, three hours. It's no problem. I used to have such big problems or driving somewhere. I'm I'm driving for 10 or 12 hours. It's a big thing for me. So I'm downloading a truck driver. Like they do it all the time. It's normal for them. So how would it feel if I were one of them? Relaxed, so secure. I know where I can get help. I know if things are getting bad, who am I going to call? I know all these things. Like it's not a big deal. I can just enjoy my trip. It's working. Use your brain. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, that's great. I love that. That's a great idea. (laughs) Ah. Russ, in dating, I need to come back to that. Um, yes, we can do it. We can talk about dating another time. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. Awesome topic? That's yeah. That feels good. Just, um, yeah. just this one question, because I think mm-hmm. it would be so easy to just give I don't know, ten tips <laughs> to find mm-hmm. the narcissist on Tinder. And swipe him left and not right. Um, this this thing in you that attracts him. Like if you suffer this, and if you keep on meeting people who treat you like this, um, you're mm-hmm. gonna notice it by feeling turned on by someone. You're not gonna see it and realize, oh, okay, it's one of those guys. You're gonna like him. It's gonna be. This is your your imprint of love is going to tell you that this guy is different. It's going to tell you that this guy is hot. It's going to make you, you know, it's going to turn you on. So you Mm. don't Mm. really stand a chance to take all these categories and see what's happening and and try to try to approach it like this. Like if I see he's doing this, I'm going to not go because you're going to be turned on by it and you're going to tell yourself it's not so bad like it's not going to happen again because you learned your lesson right so i think it would be good to like close this this convo today by um kind of getting into ideas how you can catch yourself 
catch yourself um, getting hooked again and right. realizing that you're um, yeah that that there's different kinds of attractions right and this is I mean Ken Page would call it uh, deeper dating if you have if you haven't read the book oh my god go read the book um, mm -hmm. he says there's attractions of inspiration and attractions of deprivation and if you're a person like it's like trauma attraction that's the deprivation and um, healthy attraction that's the inspiration and that's very different very different kinds of attractions you're going to feel very different towards someone and if your imprint on love is one that tells you to go for the narcissist or to go for the narcissist people then mm. you will only know the attraction through finding someone very hot very um yeah very physically drawn to very you know this is the big thing like the big love is this yeah that's what you're going to feel. And the things right. that are actually healthy for you are on the opposite. They are this, uh -huh. this warm uh -huh. feeling. It's this secure feeling. It's the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, almost, it's almost kind of boring. You know, boring is kind of my catchphrase with, for secure attachment is it feels, it, it feels boring because your system is actually relaxed and we can associate that with where's the spark. The thing with with secure attachment with these uh, connections of inspiration, as you're saying, is that when you when you have a calm nervous system, a regulated nervous system, you then learn some polarity work, like the the great stuff that you teach, and you can consciously create that spark. And then it's a really healthy dynamic as opposed to these relationships or these connections of deprivation where that kind of that, that chemical romance is already in place. Um, and yes, the sex will be amazing, but so will the trauma. Um, and then you're in that place of, okay, there are, wo there are wounds which want to be repaired. Mm. To some extent that's gonna happen in any relationship you do, but the more awareness you can bring to it at the start, um the the better so in terms of tips and things to look out for um this is something my friend told me a long time ago but the way it starts is the way it's going to continue oh. so if 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 you're sending texts and they're not responding right at the start or they're being a little vague right at the start you know that's a that's an indication of how it may continue or they're saying i would love to but i can't I would love to, but I can't. It's like, uh, I got this thing, a uh, very quick example. Um, I attract guys who want to show up, but they, they have good reasons why they can't show up. And I will understand. No, that's not how. So for example, like I, we want to meet up and uh, he doesn't have a car. And it's winter, so he only has a motorbike. So what is he going to do, right? Let's see. So he wants, he really wants to show, he really wants to meet up but he can't, <laughs> yeah, right. you know, so yeah, yeah, that's my thing, so, and that keeps on repeating it, repeats it, repeats it, so yeah, things like that. Yeah. yeah, that's right, that's right, and then I guess you get to decide, because if it brings stuff up for you, then here's your opportunity to do the work, and then to decide, let's say that somebody says, like, I can't meet you tonight, you get to decide whether that's a red flag or whether that's like, oh, that's a boundary. That's a healthy boundary yeah. because, you know, sometimes he's going to ask me and I won't want to come uh, out that night. And I also want to know that he's still going to love or appreciate or desire me yeah. when I stay at a boundary. And so the as stuff comes up, <laughs> you know, every red flag should be kind of pointing back to you and the sensations in your body so that you can meet them. Because at the early stage of a relationship, you're not dating a person, you're dating a projection. And yeah. the more that you can clean that up, the better all of your relationships are gonna be. So that would be my first couple of ports of call is like, you know, watch out for how it's, be aware of how it starts, do the work on anything that comes up because this is your opportunity. Um, and then thirdly, 
get your friends to give you feedback as well because if you get if you're getting hooked your brain goes offline as your attachment system yeah. fires up and your imago system fires up and says this is this is what love was like and it's 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 a drug <laughs> if you've got some uh, ideally a therapist uh, or some very wise friends who can give you some clean feedback which looks like you know i love you whether you go and do this or not here are my thoughts and again i love you either way and then you get yeah. to take that on um and uh you know and that also kind of reduces their you know if they've got wounds around men or they're jealous etc it reduces the amount of transference a therapist is best um yeah. but having clever friends around who can give you feedback um, or just ask you questions. It's like, hey, Russell, hey, Svenja, this sounds a lot like your last partner and that didn't work out so well. Or I've noticed you do this a couple of times, right? This is like, these are our blind spots. Now, oh my God, I'm still doing it. And, and we'll probably continue to do it. And I cultivate very, very, I actively cultivate very good friendships with people who will tell me, if I'm stepping out of the line or will give yeah. me very loving feedback. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so that would be a third thing. And then fourthly, if you are obsessing about this person, if you are fantasizing about them, um, if you get that rush, which is wonderful, but that's also a kind of like a proceed with caution. It's, it's yeah. not a, it's not, a, it's not a do not proceed, but it's just be very, very mindful that there is another part of you that is that is getting hooked and it's a very strong force but the more awareness you can bring to that um the better oh yeah <laughs> having been through this and fallen off the cliff so many times as well you know it's like i also want to kind of say that uh this is these tips are from hard won experience um <laughs> as well i'm not same and because i read them somewhere else on the internet this is like <laughs> you know i've got i've got my own dreadful stories um and hilarious <laughs> stories as well. but you know we come out all right we should do one <laughs> just only talking about fails like dating fails relationship fails imago fails i would love that okay. yep yep <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh Russ, goodness. what are your plans for next year? Next year, I'm going to be, well, you and I need to talk about doing a course on dating. Oh, I'll yeah. be putting something together on relationships at some point. And in fact, I'm about to flesh out a school of quantum hypnotherapy. And I'm looking at all the pillars that I want to create courses in. So one will be in relationships. One will be how to do shadow work and heal inner child one will be how do you communicate with the unconscious mind so that you can help other people shift and yourself and there'll be a portion of trauma um trauma awareness and you know probably some deep spiritual work as well and you know if people can complete all of those then i'll probably certify them as a as a as a quantum hypnotherapist as a healthy person <laughs> yeah Take me off you go healthy person <laughs> Go off and you can make your own mistakes consciously now and enjoy the oh, process. You're officially fixed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. You can put that on Tinder, like as one of the pictures. I'm officially fixed. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> oh beautiful. Graduated, graduated from the school of personal development. I think it's like no longer needing to be fixed. Still very, very human though. I will I will never say that I'm perfect and I'm still making mistakes and very very human which is good it keeps me very humble um yeah. and very, very compassionate towards yeah the people and myself as i meet these forces in myself which still arise that are that are, that are much greater than me yeah yeah mm. yeah well, yeah <laughs> what can i add oh this was beautiful thank you so much sure. Good to see you again, Svenja. Thank you to everyone who's listening and has stayed with us. Uh, may you have a blessed Christmas and, um, yeah, lots of love to you on your journey as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, you know, keep your nervous system calm for Christmas. Have, have a day off if you can, like, in the middle of 
the craziness and the the stuff. What's my camera doing? Hello. I'm <laughs> oh, I'm I'm in the middle of writing a, a Christmas survival guide as well, so I'll have to post that tomorrow, basically. Yeah. Um, but I've got a little post on how to the, the Christmas survival guide. And if you or any of your audience uh, want to connect or chat or ask me a question, then I'm very available. Come tomorrow is too late because we're all going to be with our families from tomorrow. You know, we celebrate Christmas on the 24th in the evening in Europe. Oh, I see. So I'd have to post it today. <laughs> tonight. I might be able to post it. I might be able to post it. I could possibly do that, actually. I'll, I'll pop it out. Yeah, I'll Yay. pop it out soon. Yay. Oh, thank you so much for your time, Ross. Thank you, everyone who was watching, listening. I promise next year I have a goal to comb my hair before doing things and maybe not sit in bed. <laughs> oh, just yeah. it's Christmas, whatever. Okay, yeah. guys. Ross, have a beautiful day. Um, you're not gonna have yeah. snow, but we have snow. It's outside. Yeah. Have cool. the best days have the best start into your 2022 and when we're like when we're going to meet again it's going to be the magic year with three twos so uh prepare mm -hmm. yeah. it's going to be amazing it's going to uh, be so good oh my god okay have a good day bye bye Ciao. drop me a message and lots of love ciao Svenja thanks to everyone who listens ciao <laughs>